Hello everyone and welcome back to the Stormblood Dungeon Lore series. In these videos I'll do my best to explain the lore behind each dungeon of Final Fantasy XIV and go over some things about them that you might not know. Today's dungeon is the hard mode version of the Fractal Continuum. The Allegans of the Third Astral Era were infamous for an expansion of technology yet unheard of in the world. They developed many new devices for various purposes, some of which still have unknown uses to this day. Since King Thordon VII forced his way to Azizlar for his machinations, however, many of the Alex secrets were revealed to those that made the journey to the Great Facility. One of these buildings, floating among the other structures and held in the shadow of the great ship containing the Etherochemical Research Facility, is the Fractal Continuum, a kind of museum for the artifacts and creatures created by the Allegans at the time. Previously, the Warrior of Light assisted Wedge in delving into the place to retrieve a new body for Gilly, a friendly assistance node that helped the Warrior of Light and their allies with accessing many of the Allegan terminals strewn across Azaz Lar. We since cleared it off hostility after triggering the alarm, but it seems as though a man named Filiot, a new recruit to the Garland Ironworks, seeks us out regarding the facility once more. He informs us that although the previous excursion should have quieted the building, they recently picked up a new signal coming from within the facility itself. Worried that it may be a new Allegan weapon going haywire, he pleads our aid in the investigation. We agree, and he leaves to meet us in Azizlar. lab. We rendezvous with Filiot at the Allegan teleporter leading to the Fractal Continuum. He moves to examine it and discovers that due to an intruder, the access to the teleporter is restricted. He then frets that the only way to reach the facility is manually via the Enterprise. The Warrior of Light approaches and Filiot apologises, stating he is not the ideal man for the job. We quell his fears confidently and he fills us in on the situation properly, and he tells us that once the Enterprise locks onto the signal from within, we can make the journey to find out the source of the disturbance in the Great Allegan facility once more. Filiot delivers us via the Enterprise to the security deck, the place which on our last excursion housed the Curator, keeper of the artifacts stored within the facility. The area seems somewhat askew and out of order however, with the large platforms having drifted awkwardly away from each other. On the platform we arrive upon, we discover an abandoned airship of odd design. The circular structure of the craft as well as the now deflated balloon seem somewhat reminiscent of the Ixal. And upon reading a nearby navigator's log, we discover that its pilot seems to be in search of something known as Ayatlan, an apparent paradise. The enemies here, meanwhile, are yet stronger variants of the prototype and half mechanical creatures created and engineered by the Allegan scientists, with Chimeras and Minotaur lining the first few platforms. As we make the jump to the second platform here, we happen to find a rogue Ixal looking around, charging off as we approach. He seems in some confusion, apparently finding aspects of the continuum familiar. Interestingly, the enemies the party fights here seem completely uninterested in the wandering exile, instead focusing on attacking the group. As we proceed here, the floating structures slowly bring themselves back together towards the centre of the deck, and eventually the party arrives at the reality augmentation bay, finding a mother bit there. This device seems wholly in control of the defence system, and begins activating several magitech bits strewn across the platform when attacked. These bits unleash a laser in front of themselves on activation, followed by a targeted attack upon the tanking party member. Due to the great number of bits, this can deal immense damage if not prepared for. After this, the mother bit uses an elegant gravity spell, leaving a puddle behind upon the target that slows and pulls in any too close to the magic. When injured, the computer calls all the bits to its side and charges a hugely damaging citadel buster, reminiscent of the ultimate weapon. The party must dodge quickly behind the laser as the bits form a wall which explodes and pushes back any too slow to evade. The mother bit continues to heavily damage the group using the bits and elegant gravity, eventually falling before the group. The party uses the now activated teleporter to reach the soldiery gallery, where we spot a second navigator's log. This one documents the Ixel pilot's landing within the facility, describing a dangerous excursion and being attacked by the defensive drones on all sides. It notes the great damage dealt to the ship, and the desperate need for repairs. 
Just to head around the corner, we come across said Ixel once more. Again confused over why the creatures running loose within the fractal continuum seem to ignore him completely. The party meanwhile tackles the dangerous creatures, more of the elegant creations broken free from their test capsules, proceeding through the large hall and tackling half a dozen of the Empusa. After this we carry on through the large door to find the Exile for a third time, examining one of the exhibits on display. This particular one is that of the Exalion, a highly intelligent design of Alag used for maintenance in their time. Notably, they have a weakness to the elements, and several genetic instabilities. The Exile, meanwhile, can't help but notice the similarities in appearance and body structure between himself and the display, remaining there to study the Exalion further. The party, meanwhile, presses on, defeating another handful of creatures before the floor nearby blasts open, allowing us into a yet unexplored area of the facility. We reach the arsenal, finding there a humanoid-like creation known as the Ultima Warrior. Lining the walls here are what seem to be wireframes of the Warring Triad, the three great icons captured in Mericidia long ago by the elegant anti-primal devices. The Warrior 2 seems to have been designed with some semblance of the Ultima weapon, using a theroplasm to strike the tanking party member. After this it begins harnessing the residual ether from one of the Triad frames, resulting in a surge of power and the Warrior gaining some of the target's abilities. Meanwhile, the Guidance System happily informs us of its progress. For Sephiroth, the Warrior uses the expanding Ratson on the group, forming bubbles of energy that expand and damage any caught within. For Sophia, it summons forth the light and dark symbols representing balance and harmony, and the group must form together with their opposite pair to survive. For Zervan, the group is imbued with a mark of fire or ice, forcing them to stand within the equivalent element marked upon the floor. After managing to evade the minimized Wrath of the Triad, we manage to fell the warrior and proceed onwards to the maintenance deck. This area seems to house the more experimental creatures, especially those infused with artificial living matter. We encounter a group of bio pellets, green galoop presumably made from plant matter, and turn the corner finding a proto chimera there. As we fight the chimera, a loud smashing sound rings out from either side, where two minotaurs attempt to break the glass containing them to charge at the party. After a while, the Minotaur to the east breaks free and begins its attack. After felling it, the party can carry on through the now broken glass and encounter another group of the bio pellets. This area seems to house several creatures behind the thick glass, presumably meant to be examined for their stability and structure. At the end of a corridor, another Minotaur begins trying to crack the glass as the party interacts with the security terminal, unlocking the door and proceeding back into the open area of the deck. Although the Minotaur attempts to break through every pane of glass, it eventually gives up as the party tackles the manufactured Brobignacs here, but yet another Minotaur bursts through on the opposite side. After defeating this final raging creation, we reach a security terminal leading to the Genesis engine, where one of the most treasured creations of Alag awaits. From the large rear door of the room comes forth a four-legged Ultima Beast, its back equipped with what seems to be a huge power generator, and it roars as it leaps onto the platform. As we engage the creature, the guidance system awakens once more and notices we've disturbed the Ultima Prototype 6. This beast uses the enhancer upon its back to empower its attacks, beginning with a whirling claw swipe that knocks away any nearby. Unsurprisingly, the Ultima Beast uses techniques eventually seen in the Ultima Weapon, Although in particular, aspects of both the Beast and the Ultima Warrior were seen when adventurers delved into the lost island of Dunscaith. There they fought a prototype of the Ultima Weapon, which seemed to have abilities brought together from both creations. The Beast unleashes a Flare Star, a large explosion damaging any too close, following it up with a group targeted Alagon Gravity. After this, the Beast begins absorbing power from its enhancer, increasing its ferocity and causing electricity to charge about its back. It prepares a heavily damaging Demi Ultima, blasting the party with energy. When injured, the beast begins calling forth an elegant flare on the tanking party member, dealing enormous damage to them and any close by. Following this, it attempts to combine its abilities in desperation, bringing forth another flare star along with the targeted elegant flare. Lastly, it attempts to call forth light pillars, fast moving laser beams that spread out in all directions. 
after which the beast begins its final attack. Charging another Demi Ultima, the party must hurry to finish the beast off before it can unleash all its energy. They manage to succeed, silencing the facility once more and putting the dangerous creature to rest. Over near the teleport in Az's lar, Filiot is received to have made it out alive, but thankful we now know that the weapons within the Fractal Continuum caused the rogue signal. He ponders as to why they might have needed the prototypes, but decides it a question better left unanswered. He looks to his right where we spot the lone Ixel that was wandering the corridors, guessing that the beast man awoke the weapons, and now seems unresponsive to Filiot's questions. The Ixel meanders away and Filiot returns his attention to the restricted teleporter heading over to test it and finding it's functional once more. He then wonders how the Ixel could have even gotten the craft to make it inside the facility, and remembers a rumour of a tribe of Ixel known as the Akatal Nine, working on their own form of airship. He suggests we pay them a visit and heads off to North Shroud and the Akatal village. We rendezvous with Filiot and march into the small settlement, spotting an Ixel seemingly getting an earful from his chieftain, Sezul Totolok, the superior in question, seems furious with the Ixel for taking their ship when it was unfinished, but presses the thief, Kazul, if he had found Ayathlan. Kazul seems hesitant, prompting Filiot to step forth to speak with him. Sezul seems surprised at our appearance, but Kazul stems his anger by informing him of our encounter in the Fractal Continuum, mentioning it as his law. Sezul seems puzzled, and Kazul breaks the uncomfortable truth to him, that among the rows and rows of tubes lining the walls did he find the creature known as the Ixalion, that struck a striking resemblance to the Ixal, that they were highly obedient flyers made to serve the Allegans. Filiot notes the resemblance between the two, citing the Wind Risen to be particularly loyal to superiors. Kazul explains too the similarities with the weakness to the elements, and also the instability of their race and jaw. He seems distraught, believing that Ayatlan lies only in the test tubes of the facility. Sazul silences him, stating that if Ayatlan is the Allegan facility, and they must look elsewhere for paradise. He inspires Kazul by reminding him that their desire to fly and aspiration for greatness was not born of that same tube, and requests he keep silent about his excursion into the Fractal Continuum. Kazul seems heartened, and Filiot questions about their activity in Azizla. Kazul confirms that he will never return, but Sazul still seems ready to administer punishment to the rogue Ixal, giving chase as Kazul flees the scene. And that's the end of the story and lore of the hard mode version of the Fractal Continuum. After an intruder delves into the Allegan facility, awakening yet more dangerous weapons than ever, they find a truth about themselves and their brethren that strikes to the core. With the Akatal Nine's hopes for Ayatlan dashed and their airship ruined, they can but hope to find their own future, far away from a home inside a tube within the place they were created long ago. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, Leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Final Fantasy XIV, and I'll see you next time for the Swallow's Compass.